ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय I offer my humble obeisance unto the supreme personality of Godhead Vasudeva Narayanam namaskrityam naram chaiva narottamam devim saraswatim vyasam tato jayam mudirayet Before reciting Shrimad Bhagavatam which is the very means of conquest one should offer respectful obeisance unto the supreme personality of Godhead Narayana unto Narayan Rishi the supermost human being unto mother saraswati the goddess of learning and unto shri vyasadev the author of shrimad bhagavatam nashta prayeshu abhadreshu nityam bhagavat sevaya bhagavati uttam shloke bhaktir bhavati nashta ki by regular attendance in the classes on shrimad bhagavatam and by rendering service unto the pure devotee all that is troublesome to the heart is almost completely destroyed and loving service unto the personality of godhead who is praised with transcendental songs is established as an irrevocable fact paramananda pathaya prema varshi aksharayati sarvada sarvasevyaya shri krishnaya namastute o shrimad bhagavatam i offer my respectful obeisance unto you by reading you one attains transcendental bliss for your syllables rain pure love of god upon the reader you are always to be served by everyone for you are an incarnation of lord krishna gurave gaur chandra e radhika ya tadalaye krishna ya krishna bhakta ya tad bhakta ye namo namaha hari krishna dear vaishnavas thank you so much for joining we are reading granth raj shrimad bhagavatam canto 7 chapter 5 Prahlad Maharaj, the saintly son of Hiranya Kashipu. So we read till text number 13 yesterday. And we were discussing the response of Prahlad Maharaj. That people who are at a pure, uh, on the level of pure bhakti, they do not distinguish uh, between friend and enemy. In fact, the whole world is a friend for them. Because they consider... they are suhrida sarva bhutana they are the friend of everyone they do not have any envy against anyone because they see uh, that everyone is part and parcel of the supreme lord that's how prahlad maharaj was saying let's see what he speaks further text 14 yatha brahmyati ayo brahman svayam akarsha sannidhau tatha me bhidyate chetas ऑटोमेटिकली who carries a disk in his hand thus i have no independence purport for iron to be attracted by a magnet is natural similarly for all living entities to be attracted toward krishna is natural and therefore the lord's real name is krishna meaning he who attracts everyone and everything the typical examples of such attraction are found in vrindavan where every thing and everyone is attracted by krishna the elderly persons like nanda maharaj and yashoda devi the friends like shri dama sudama and the other cowherd boys the gopis like shrimati radharani and her associates and even the birds bees cows and calves are attracted the flowers and fruits in the gardens are attracted the waves of the yamuna are attracted and the land sky trees plants animals and all other living beings are attracted by krishna this is the natural situation for everything in vrindavan just contrary to the affairs of vrindavan is this material world where no one is attracted to by krishna and everyone is attracted by maya this is the difference between the spiritual and the material worlds hiranyakashipu 
who was in the material world was attracted by women and money whereas Prahlad Maharaj being in his natural position was attracted by Krishna in replying to Hiranyakashipu's question about why Prahlad Maharaj had a deviant view Prahlad said that his view was not deviant for the natural position of everyone is to be attracted by Krishna Hiranyakashipu found this view deviant Prahlad said because of being unnaturally unattracted by Krishna Hiranyakashipu therefore needed purification so I'll stop here so someone else can read uh, so so far really such a profound verse with such a wonderful purport that Jivera Swarup Hoy Krishna Nitya Das Krishna is so attractive what to speak of human beings even the animals even the rivers the flowers everyone is attracted uh, by to Krishna because Krishna means attractive all attractive but I am still attracted to Maya money opposite sex name fame this is the Hiranyakashipu within like Hiranyakashipu means attached to wine uh, attached to gold and women that's the literal meaning and that basically applies to majority or 99.99% of the population is like the Hiranyakashipu mentality although Krishna is all attractive he is there to give himself completely to anyone who would want but still I do not want to turn towards Krishna that is very unnatural state so the deviant state is not the attraction towards Krishna the deviant state is the Hiranyakashipu state where we are attracted we are not where, where we are not attracted to the all attractive that's our biggest misfortune so the natural propensity is to be attracted like the iron which is you know the iron has magnetism as an inherent property whenever there is a magnet the iron would pull himself to the magnet but that iron which is covered with rust of lust envy etc the, the magnetism is there but it has been covered therefore we need the process of filing you know we all may have done at some point when we scrape off that rust using a process of filing uh, and that process of filing or removing the top covering the dust Chetodarpana Marjanam is clearing stage is the process of bhakti or sadhana bhakti so that we can that love which is dormant that attraction for Krishna which is dormant can be rekindled that inherent magnetism attraction towards Krishna which is there can be rekindled and that fire of attraction can be awakened that is the whole process of Krishna consciousness so let's read the rest uh, of the purport and then we'll see would someone like to read who didn't read yesterday do you want me to read Hare Krishna please Prabhuji please thank you Dhanwat everybody this is Badra as soon as one is purified of material contamination he is again attracted by Krishna Sarvo Padi Vinir Muktam Tat Paratvina Nirmanam Chaitanya Chaitamrita 19 chapter 170 verse in the material world everyone is contaminated by the dirt of sense gratification exactly according to different designations sometimes as a human being sometimes as beast sometimes a demigod or tree and so on one must be cleansed of all these designations then one will be then one will be naturally attracted to Krishna the bhakti process purifies the living entity of all the natural attractions when one is purified he is attracted by Krishna and begins to serve Krishna instead of serving Maya this is his natural position a devotee is attracted by Krishna where is a non-devotee being contaminated by dirt of material enjoyment is not this is confirmed by the Lord in Bhagavad Gita 7.28 
हिसाम द्वंद गत पापम जना पुण्य क्रमा ते द्वंद मोह निर्मुक्ता भजन ते माम दृढ़ावृता है पर्सन एक्टेड पायसली इन प्रीवियस लाइफ एंड इन दिस लाइफ वो सिंफुल एक्शन आर कंप्लीटली रेडिकेटेड and who are freed from the duality of dindis and engages themselves in my service determinate with determination one must be freed from all the sinful dirt of material existence everyone in this material world is contaminated by material desires unless one is free from all material desires anya bilasata shunyam one cannot be attracted by krishna <laughs> krishna so you already said everything but i just wanted to read the important vishnu chakravarti thakur's uh, is uh, just one paragraph uh, what what prahlad has prahlad maharaj is trying to tell here he is saying the what is the difference between my intelligence and your intelligence he is saying that just as the iron moves its own towards a magnet and just naturally you say that my consciousness moves its own towards vishnu and becomes spontaneously different from your consciousness as hiranyakas consciousness is uh, explained the properties the human human and the uh, and the prop and the and the power and prestige and all these things human that is property and all this that's hiranyakas consciousness here my consciousness is, is because it is naturally is that is the natural constitutional position of the living you already said living entities that's the position of now krishna jivita sarupa krishna tadas and that is natural but because and that's where my position is my situation your consciousness is covered with all these things so then he says that it does so on its own not caused by pious karmas austerity or charities Interesting. So it is not happening because of my pious karmas or austerity or charity. The magnet by its shakti attracts the iron and joins with it. There is no cause or goal in that attraction. I mean, it's common. He says, just as the magnet has a natural attraction, iron. Vishnu has his nature. The mind of the devotee becomes attracted to the Lord, controlled by His mercy. Where is my independence in that? So, Prabhu Maharaj is very. He is saying, "Where is my independence?" I know it. He's, he's, I am attracted to Krishna by His mercy, and I'm, I'm, my mind is fixed on it. On it. So that's what he's trying to say here. And of course, the, of course, the points are anya bila sita sunya. We have, we have quoted this verse many times, and bhakti is the process which will help us. to uncover it's like a it's like a onion an onion you remove all the layers the onion is of course we, we don't we come to eat onion but the general idea mm-hmm. similarly by the bhakti the gradually by being patient and with determination we continue this uh, serving the lord continue our devotional service then this all these covers will be removed gradually from our heart and our heart will become pure and that is a natural we will be attracted to krishna right now it's difficult for myself to be i'm not even attracted to krishna after 40 40 years of devotional service but somehow that i'm going on somehow or other so i have faith that yeah one day will it will happen so we just continue with patience and determination that's what shila prabhupar is also saying in the saying in the parm is saying the purport the yeah, prabhu thank you thank you thank you so much prabhu ji for your wonderful comments anyone else has any comments or questions okay let's read the next one nandini mata ji want to read text 15 yes sir yes prabhu dandatrana shrinarad vacha स्वामी 
the great saint narad muni continued the great soul prahlad maharaj became silent after saying this to his teachers shanda and amaraka the seminal sons of shukracharya these so called brahmanas then became angry at him because they were servants of hiranyakashipu they were very sorry and to chastise prahlad maharaj they spoke as follows the word shukra means semen the sons of shukracharya were brahmanas but by birth right but not by but an actual brahmana is one who possesses the brahmanical qualities the brahmana shanda and amarka being seminal sons of shukracharya did not actually possess real brahmanical qualifications for they engaged as servants of hiranyakashipu an actual brahmana is very much satisfied to see anyone not to speak of his disciple become a devotee of lord krishna such brahmanas are meant to satisfy the supreme master a brahmana is strictly prohibited from becoming a servant of anyone else for that is the business of dogs and shudras a dog must satisfy his master but a brahmana does not have to satisfy anyone he simply meant to send satisfy krishna anukulena krishna anu shiganam that is the real qualification of a brahmana because shanda and amarka were seminal brahmanas and had become servants of such a master as hiranyakashipu they unnecessarily wanted to chastise prahlad maharaj in this uh, similar topic i had a very nice lecture by i think amongila prabhu so he was saying that uh, oh anybody can become, become a brahmana nowadays the thread only cost 50 cents and the clothes only cost like 1000 rupees but it's not external as a dress it's not even external as um say, saying yeah, <laughs> saying yes sir and serving the demon king like hiranyakashipu a real brahmana yeah, as prabhu is saying his only purpose is to simply meant to satisfy krishna anukulena krishna nu anushitanam so this is the the anything that a brahmana does has to be rooted in this faith this sole purpose is to satisfy krishna is not to gain money not to gain respect not to have servants or not to have a profession to avoid a brahmana is not worried about any of those things a brahmana is and purpose is a brahmana is strictly forbidden from becoming a servant of anyone else so a brahmana has to be very careful and he he should not serve anybody else except supreme personality of godhead for and he said it so for further acts serving somebody else is only for dogs and shudras of course there is a clarification about in kaluga everybody is a shudra so but rupa awarded brahmanical initiations and they they have been practiced for a long time in our parampara so they, and of course not to go deviate a lot from the subject but a person serving krishna's deity and uh, uh, supporting himself through a job is completely acceptable what to uh, is more than recommended Prabhupada also also reminds that that they they were sem- uh, they, they were brahmanas by birth right, Sh- and and Amaraka. So they had no, so they had no so, so brahmanical qualifications whatsoever actually. But they were just uh, uh, brahmana by the birth right. And this is a very uh, wrong mentality is to think of uh, qualifications by birth. and provoke they were very sorry and to chastise prahlad maharaj they speak and we will listen to what this respective provoke is at thank you very much hari krishna thank you thank you so much mataji you so nicely mentioned all the points so if we if we serve krishna then everyone is happy asmin tushte jagat tushte so that's the real duty of a brahman or a vaishnava we discussed the example of bhakti siddhanta saraswati thakur that no one can you know purchase a vaishnava no one can or, or vaishnava should not be purchased by money or other monetary things uh, because whatever one a devotee does the prime focus should be how it will please krishna 
Simon asked his um, Mr. Radhanath Swami Maharaj and multiple question and in the essence and the response for all the questions was how this will please Krishna the most. So if we have that as our foremost goal in life, then we would get answers to all the questions. How this would please Krishna? Whenever we have any doubt, should I do this? Should I not do this? Should I go there? Should I not go there? Should I, you know, any emotional doubt, situational doubt, financial doubt, any doubt we may have, if we honestly, sincerely pray to Krishna and ask, will this, what will please Krishna the most? And it's a very deep statement actually. And it, a lot of things are into is this like within the statement. So, and that's the real duty of a Brahman or Vaishnava, simply meant to satisfy Krishna. Let's read the next one. Yes, Sundari Prima, did you want to read, please? Yes, Prabhuji, thank you. Please, Mr. Mahambala Basant, it's all glory. Tishla Prabhupada, text 16. Aniyatam Revetram Asa Makam Ayashaka Kara Kulanga Rasya Durbudhes Chaturtho Ashodhito Dama Translation purport by the Divine Grace Isi Bhakti Vedanta Swami Shlaprapad Prabhupad Kije. Oh, please bring me a stick. This Prahlad is damaging our name and fame. Because of his bad intelligence, he has become like a cinder in the dynasty of the demons. Now he needs to be treated by the fourth of the four kinds of political diplomacy purport. In political affairs, when a person disobediently agitates against the government, four principles are used to suppress him. Legal orders, pacification, the offer of a post, or finally weapons. When there are no other arguments, he is punished. In logic, this is called argumentum or uh, ad Baculum. When the two seminal um, Brahmanas, Sanda and Amarka, failed to extract from Prahlad Maharaj the cause of his having opinions different from those of his father, they called for a stick with which to chastise him to satisfy their master here in Nikashipu. Because Prahlad had become a devotee, they considered him to be contaminated by bad intelligence and to be the worst descendant in the family of demons. As it is said, where ignorance is bliss, it is folly to be wise. In a society or family in which everyone is a demon, for someone or be, uh, someone to become a Vaishnava is certainly folly. Thus, Prahlad Maharaj was charged with bad intelligence because he was among demons, including his teachers who were supposedly Brahmanas. The members of our Krishna conscious movement are in a position similar to that of Prahlad Maharaj all over the world. 99% of the people are godless demons and therefore are preaching of Krishna consciousness following in the footsteps of Prahlad Maharaj is always hampered by many impediments. Because of their fault of being devotees, the American boys who have sacrificed everything for preaching Krishna consciousness are charged with being members of the CIA. Moreover, the seminal Brahmanas in India who were, say that one can become a Brahmana only if born in a Brahman family charge us with ruining the Hindu system of religion. Of course, the fact is that one becomes a Brahmana by qualification because we are training Europeans and Americans to become qualified and are awarding them Brahmanical status. We are being charged with destroying the Hindu religion. Nonetheless, confronting all kinds of difficulties, we must spread the Krishna conscious movement with great determination, like that of Prahlad Maharaj. In spite of being the son of the demon Hiranyakashipur, Prahlad never feared the chastisements of the seminal Brahmana sons of a demonic father. Jai. So here we see a shift. First, they tried very soft procedure of you know invoking him and probing him and finding out if he's going to change but now that Prahlad Maharaj was very direct and he he kept quiet after that Narad Muni explains that that how they, they suddenly changed their 
their diplomacy and they started uh, bringing they asked to bring a stick and they they wanted to uh, they were really uh, actually working uh, even though they were brahmanas but they they, they were working uh, like uh, in the previous words mataji explained that they were demonic and they 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 were serving only the interest of hiranyakashipu they were not looking at what prahlad's intelligence where that is coming from and instead they're chastising him and saying because of his bad intelligence we we need to uh, now and now we, he has become like a cinder in the dynasty of the demons. So basically, he's he's uh, he's a basically a, a black sheep kind of thing, you know. And and they they were treating that. Uh, here, Prabhupada explains beautifully what a political diplomacy is. That they there are different kinds of uh, things. Even we see in today's society, you know, different political parties fighting against each other. They're they're always first they try to. And, you know, give or legal order. Then they doesn't it doesn't happen. Then they start to mediate. Then they offer money. They offer post. They finally nothing. Somebody kills somebody. You know that's the that's the nature of the material world. And they, these people, even the though being a seminal Brahmin, they 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 started the same procedure. And but and they were chastising him and he Prahlad Maharaj is, he he had become a devotee and the Prabhupada is giving that contrast that yes once once you take up a Vaishnava uh, philosophy and you you know you you take basically you're declaring a war against Maya and we see even our you know those who are whose families are not supportive of it how much uh, you know in the so many even that book salted bread we see so much uh, uh, the, in the Russian devotees had to go through so much torture even in the Hare Krishna movie we saw how the lawsuits were being filed against uh, the Krishna conscious movement in the 70s and how uh, Tamal Krishna Maharaj was chastised and they were all thrown in so many things were were done and they, they blamed even to a point that they're all these people are CIA agents and they're trying to brainwash our kids and you know they're taking away. Even we see how the, that uh, pastime of Giri, Giriraj Swami Maharaj's pa, father came to Shila Prabhupada and said, "You write as amount, amount of money you want, you know, and uh, just release him." So there is so much. That, but when you have the mercy of the Lord, like Chela, Prahlad Maharaj said, because the Lord is favorable, has bestowed a great favor upon me. That's why I am. I am. Uh, you know, going in this path, he never, he told the truth to his teachers, he didn't lie, he didn't, that's how a Vaishnava is, no matter how much resistance we have, we tell the truth that this is the path of dharma, this is what we are really uh, inspired to follow and it is the dharma of every living entity, but uh, those who are demonic and, and they have uh, political goals to gain name fame they don't understand this and the Krishna conscious movement really weans off those who, who cannot uh, sustain this movement and then the, the great determination comes from resistance in order to um, really uh, take the arrow back you then only can you fire it forward so that's my understanding Prabhuji please explain further Hare Krishna Thank you, thank you so much, Mataji. Hare Krishna, Gandhi Pranam, devotees. Just to add one point uh, in this day to share your voice, but we it's a free culture. It's it's not a religion. Okay. I think it's clear it's now, Prabhu? Yes, yes. Is it better now? Yes, please. Is it better now, Prabhu? Yes, Prabhu. Please. Hare yeah. Krishna, devotees. Yeah. Just to add on the the aspect in relation to Srila Prabhupada's purport about Hindu culture. So Hindu is not a religion, Prabhu. Hindu is a culture, Hindu is an aspect wherein you know we have the freedom to choose our our own spiritual path. It's not about religion, it's about you know being spiritual spiritually uplifted 
and choosing a path. So, in Krishna consciousness, the concept is implemented in practical life. Everybody across uh, the societies, across religion, across caste, across creed, you know, wherever they are taken birth, they are given the opportunity to be to become Brahmin. Because that was the culture, the Gurukul culture. As we have all studied in um, Shastras, in, in Granthas, we have all read that, that in the Gurukul, everybody was equal for the Guru. And then the Guru would decide which path the child would be able to take depending on the interest of the child, depending on the ability of the child to grasp the aspects. If he'll become a politician, he'll become a Kshatriya, he'll become a Brahman or he'll just serve the society. You know, it would depend on the qualities that a child would would portray. And that's where uh, equal opportunity is being given through our Krishna conscious movement to all living entities, I mean living entities in respect to human beings specifically, to be able to understand where we are actually placed. And everybody is has the ability to be Krishna conscious and everybody has the ability to become a pure devotee. Everybody, not even a single human being can be left. If given proper training, if given proper support and if given proper Sangha association. So every human being has the ability to become a pure devotee. And that's that's what the Krishna Consciousness Movement is all about. Correct me if I'm wrong, Prabhu, please add. Hare Krishna, Dhanvat Pranam devotees. Hare Krishna, thank you, Prabhu. So as Mataji said, that now the mood of the teachers has changed from being kind to being angry. And Prabhupada makes such a nice statement here. It is said, where ignorance is bliss, it is folly to be wise. Or in other words, when good advice is given to a fool or ignorant or faithless person, it just increases the anger. And that's what happened. The Guru said, oh, tell me who has polluted your mind or your intelligence and first the words used in text number 10 is Kula Nandana the best amongst the Kula you are good fortune to our Kula but now the word used is Kula Angarasya you are the Angara in our Kul you are like that charcoal that cinder in our dynasty who will burn the dynasty because you have a polluted mind. And when Prahlad replied, actually my mind is not polluted, my dear teachers. Your mind is polluted. What can I do? My mind is completely pure. This good advice, they could not bear it. How dare you say that our mind is polluted? Chari lao, chari lao. Bring a stick. That's what is, you know, His own Nazada Govind Maharaj was so nicely mentioning that. Aniyatam are vetaram. Are, bring that stick. Let's punish this boy. You know, in India you may have seen, and no one brings the stick, but just that fear, causing that fear, that if we say like this, oh, the stick is about to come. You know, parents may chastise sometimes. If you do like this, I will, you know, uh, put you outside on the road in the dark. They may not do that, but they'll just say like that. That if you do like this, I will put you in the dark room for two hours. Or if you do like this, I will bring, get that stick and do this to you. So, Aniyatam, Are Vetaram, bring that stick. Well, they couldn't even afford, you know, they couldn't even dare to touch Prahlad Maharaj with the stick because he was the, the guru, uh, he was the son of the king. And these were servants of the king. So the servants of the king cannot touch the son of the king. But just to create some fear, 
Now the you, the the first approach didn't work. Kind words, sama dama danda bheda. Sama is peaceful treaty. It didn't work. Now they're using the other method, that is danda, chastisement or punishment. So somehow they they want to to clean the mind of Prahlad, which they are thinking polluted. And they were, of course, very angry. And it is, as I mentioned, when good advice is given to a fool or ignorant or faithless person, it just increases their anger. There's this nice Sanskrit verse, which I'm not able to recall at this point, for this same statement. Um, but it also ties to our preaching uh, or outreaching, that we should not... Based on time, place, situation, we should be careful in whom to share. Who have little faith, who are completely, uh, you know, faithless or opposing, they may not be the right candidate, and it may be just uh, wasting our time, and we may lose the opportunity to reach out to the right candidates who have little faith. It, so that's a practical suggestion also from this statement. And as Mataji also already shared about the challenges devotees undergo through while outreaching. So, but Prahlad Maharaj was never fearful. We discussed that verse. Narayana parasarve nakutaschana bibhiyati svarga pavarga narkeshu api tulyartha darshinaha one who is completely attached to Narayana or Krishna, Swarga, Apavarga, Narkeshu, Apitulya, they have the same value for that person. Okay, whatever Krishna chooses for me. And Prahlad Maharaj was, Narayan, completely Narayan Parayana, not just so-called devotee, completely pure devotion. So therefore, he was fearless. Any other comments or questions? Okay, let's see what happens from Sivilas Prabhu. You want to read? Yes, Prabhuji, Dhanda Pranam, everyone. Text 17. Daiteya Chandana Vani Jato Yam Kantakadrama Yan Mulo Mula Parasor Vishnor Nalaito Rabakaha. Translation and performed by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Translation. The, this rascal Prahlada has appeared like a thorn tree in a forest of sandalwood. To cut down sandalwood trees, an axe is needed, and the wood of the thorn tree is being suitable for the handle of such an axe. Lord Vishnu is the axe for cutting down the sandalwood forest of the family of demons. And this Prahlada is the handle of that axe. Purport. Thorn trees generally grow in deserted places, not in sandalwood forests. But the seminal Brahmana, Sanda and Amarka, compared the dynasty of Daitya Hiranyakashipu to a sandalwood forest and compared Prahlad Maharaja to a hard, strong thorn tree that could provide the handle of an axe. They compared Lord Vishnu to the axe him itself. An axe alone cannot cut a thorn tree. It needs a handle, which may be made of the wood of the thorn tree. Thus the, thus the thorn tree of demoniac civilization can be cut to pieces by the acts of Vishnu Bhakti, devotional service to Lord Krishna. Some of the members of the demoniac civilization, like Prahlad Maharaj, may become the handle for the axe to assist Lord Vishnu and thus the entire forest of demoniac civilization can be cut to pieces. 
So in this verse, uh, Sanda and Amarka, the sons of Sukracharya, are, um, are comparing the the demoniac society of uh, Hiranyakashipu and Hiranyaksha um, as uh, sandalwood trees. Usually, sandalwood trees are um, are associated with uh, good qualities. We had the Chandan festival recently, so we, we know uh, the sandalwood is um, is used for worship of the Lord, and uh, clearly they have this reverse because uh, Hiranyakashipu and the demoniac families cannot be sandalwood trees. But Sanda and Amarka, though they are so-called Brahmanas, they have understood uh, materialistic persons as sandalwood trees and uh, and Prahlad Maharaj as a, a thorn bush. Um, so th this is similar to what was discussed in the previous verses also uh, where uh, the modern society thinks of devotees as just wasting their time or uh, good for nothing people. So um, a similar similar mentality is what these so-called Brahmanas also had about uh, Prahlad Maharaj. But we know Prahlad Maharaj is the best among devotees and uh, he's a very exalted person and uh, and they're comparing him to the thorn bush where um, it can be made into an axe. Um, sorry, um, made into the holder uh, of the handle of the axe and Lord Vishnu himself is the axe. And we, we see how Prabhupada is wonderfully taking that as true because yeah, if there if there's a demoniac family, Lord Vishnu will act as the axe and the devotee will act as a handle and it will remove all the demoniac society and convert them into into devotees. So uh, uh, Prabhupada is giving us how actually the axe, uh, axe and the handle uh, uh, given here is, uh, is doing the right thing. Thank you Prabhuji, please if you'd like to add or correct. Thank you, thank you, Prabhu. It's so interesting that because they still feel, Shan and Amar are still feeling that we are right and Prahlad is wrong. It's a very deep rooted feeling in a condition so that I am right. Others are wrong and therefore they are comparing. The analogy they are giving is very interesting. They are, they are comparing like Prahlad is an outlier. Generally thorns don't grow in sandalwood trees. Sandalwood trees, you know, grows along with other sandalwood trees. How come this outlier come in this society? So they are thinking that they are best. And Prahlad is bad because he is he will become. He may become a cause of destruction, as some Silas already discussed that point. So we can learn that, that this tendency is very, very deep rooted. That I am right, others are wrong. But if we introspect, and like how this come is coming to my mind, if one is at least neutral or have little faith. Like how King Rahugana uh, also first chastised or made fun of Jad Bharat. But when Jad Bharat spoke profound philosophy, Rahugana did take a, a humble role because he was not totally puffed up. He was not totally, uh, you know, in the mood of ignorance is bliss. But Prahlad Maharaj is giving instruction to his father, to these people, but no, no response. Like this also is coming to my mind when Vidura gave good instructions to Duryodhana. What happened? Duryodhana's anger increased. He said, get out, you son of the maid servant, get out. Who dare you talk to me like this? It was such good advice for his benefit. 
Later what happened? He died, all his brothers died. Because he ignored the good advice. So, it's very very interesting here. All these are very very important verses that how they are comparing themselves to sandalwood and uh, um, the, the, the sandalwood festival or the Chandan Yatra festival it goes for 21 days so it starts from the day of Akshay Tritya which was about 6 days back and it continues for 21 days so you may all be seeing wonderful deity darshans from Vrindavan, from Mumbai, from Mayapur and all these Khan temples and all the Vrindavan temples they have wonderful deity darshan at this time. I did share one lecture by His Grace uh, Dinabandhu Prabhu. I'm not sure if you all got a chance to hear that but uh, it's very nice. He has shared the importance of Akshadvitya, Chandan Yatra, how this started, what is this, what was the pastime behind and all those details are there if you're interested to hear. Please Anyone has any other comments or questions? Okay, thank you. And I really want to thank, uh, I won't name those devotees, but a few devotees did take time to do the quiz and respond back. Uh, I was very happy to see those responses and I want to personally thank and uh, it gives a lot of encouragement and inspiration um, so thank you to all those who did that um, it means a lot to me so we will stop here and continue tomorrow Kantra Shriman Bhagavatam Ki Chai Shula Prabhupada Ki Chai Samaveta Gaur Bhaktarindh Ki Chai Vancha kalpata rubhyascha kripa sindhu vyevacha patita nam pavanibhyo vaishnavibhyo namunama. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.